Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. And now we're going to look at the rules for the solo experience. So the setup is very easy. Money will start on three, happiness on one, and then you put this board aside. You're going to have two people out of all the spots like normal, and your red starter one will go here. Then you'll draw seven tiles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you will place these face up around the board. And you will cover up all of the red spots on the board, and you will cover up all the pre-painted, or the shops that are already on the board here. Then you're gonna shuffle these 12 cards up that are the reviewer cards. You have the reviewer here on the path that leads to the bar. You're going to take four of these, take these out of the game. So you're going to be left with eight cards and a stack. You're going to draw one tile from each of these stacks, and you're ready to play the game. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the reviewer card from the top of the deck, and you're going to look at it. This is going to tell you how the reviewer is going to move. So one, two, because there's a two up here. And this will tell you what you're going to get a bonus for if you're able to score a blue tile this time. That's what he's looking to do. Then you look at the top movement card, which will move the green group with at least a blue. And you're going to play a tile from the game, just like normal. So you'd pay your $3. I'm going to play this tile down here. I mean, you can always put ownership markers on it, but in all honesty, you're a solo player and you own all of the amusement places on the board. Now, as for playing a tile, all the same actions apply. It could have been a roller coaster I, I played, just like the base game. I can play one here or I can give them up for staff actions. In this case, I'm just gonna play one here because I wanna utilize the next step. Then I'm going to move the guests. I'll put a yellow here, the purple here, and the yellow here. So the good thing about the reviewers are they can activate any spot, but you're gonna get a bonus for the one on the bottom of the card here. So the yellow, I'm gonna score the money and the happiness here. This yellow, money and happiness like normal because I own all of the buildings. Now the purple's gonna act a little bit different. If the purple matches the fame card, this is going to be very important, so it does, I would score everything as normal, and I'm going to get two fame points for that matching because I'm activating the reviewer on a purple, I mean, on a blue spot. That worked out well. Otherwise, if it wasn't, I wouldn't score those fame points, but I would because he matches up. Now, if I activated the roller coaster, then anything would be doubled. So whatever fame I would get, the amount of fame would be doubled. And then I draw a new tile, just like the base game. And that's really the only difference. So the really only difference is going to be this deck of cards and how the reviewer is going to be moving around and trying to get the reviewer on that spot. So at the end of the game, you're going to score your points like normal, except for you're not going to score points for the tiles that you play. So normally at the end of the game, the ones that you own, you score these points for. That is not. You're only going to score those if you match that fame card. Then at the end of the game, you're going to take the scoring sheet. You're going to look, oh, I got 25 to 29. It's really good. Gives you a little bit of thing. So every time you come back, you're going to have eight rounds to try to beat your score and to score more and more points. It's a really fun little diversion here. I actually like the solo version. I like playing it. I like trying to get this guy around, see how many points I can get, and kind of maximizing that score as I go around. So if I want to play Imagineers, I don't have anybody to play with me, or I want to play kind of like that Moncala aspect or that the thing. I really like this game quite a bit as a family game. I do like the solo experience. I probably like it more as a regular game, but this is this deck right here, these review cards are really going to shake things up as he's moving around the board, and I want to activate that space. It creates kind of a puzzle for me because if he's not exactly where I want him to be, do I give up the tile? and try to move him to a different location so I can utilize that doubling score or those fame points is a great way to get those. So it's a really neat little puzzle I'm trying to figure out as I go through. Imagineers is one of my favorite games. I really, really like this game. I honestly do. And the solo version, I don't know if I would buy the game just for the solo version, but it's it's got that great flexibility that it has this uh, aspect to it. And it doesn't play exactly like the base game because there are some differences which I've outlined here. So it makes me feel like I'm getting a twist on it or a variant, and I think it works very, very well. So this is what I would recommend. If you want to play it just solo, I think it works well. It's not gonna, it's not gonna tax you too much. It's not gonna be too much trying to figure things out. There's not a lot of bookkeeping to it. You know, it's really just moving this guy around and flipping an additional card, and you're playing just the eight rounds. So you can move really, really quickly. And you can you can bust out two or three solo games pretty quickly if you don't have analysis paralysis, which I don't. Uh, the aspect of what tiles are coming up, it's still a little chaotic, but it's a little bit less chaos, even though you have this deck coming out, because somebody else isn't moving all the meeples around. The meeples are pretty much staying stagnant unless I meet, move them. The only person who's moving is this guy. And he can be important, of course, for the doubler and getting those fame points, etc. 
but it's not the end all be all either. I can still generate my points through the happiness and the event cards that are coming out. So it can be very powerful. So overall, like it a lot. I can recommend it. If you're going to play just solo, it's nice to have a solo game that can also be played multiplayer. Two thumbs up for me.